Well, good afternoon, everybody. We are back here with Real Estate Talk, and today I have with us a professional organizer. I have Barbara, what? Trapp. Barbara Trapp. That's right. I don't know why like my the brain went just today. Singers. Okay. So today I have Barbara Trapp with us, and she owns a company called Zen Your Den and also Zen Your Biz. And she, like I said, is a professional organizer and a coach. So she's going to tell, talk to us today about some different tips for organizing your home and your home office. So welcome, Barbara. Thank you. Glad Thank you for here. having me. Glad, glad you're here. Tell us first, how in the world did you get into organizing? Um, a few years ago, I um, was stuck in between jobs and I realized I really didn't want to work for another company again. So I packed my car and took a trip around the country listening to um, all the top business books that I could come across as I went. Um, and I just kept driving. I thought I was just gonna visit my brother in California and come back and start applying for jobs, but I kept going. Um, ended up at my parents' house in Pennsylvania and stayed there for a couple of months coordinating a big home renovation. So, you know, a lot of times when people get older, they need to sell their homes and fix them up and then they're sold. Well, we wanted to fix it up so they could enjoy it while they're there so and age in place for a while so it was a good learning experience but i was so busy i really didn't know what i wanted to do when i um, got my car and head back to florida until about three minutes before i hit the florida border i um i heard the term professional organizer in one of the books i was listening to and that was it <laughs> so did you have to get special licensing special training or anything like that um, there is no legal requirement for that, but I immediately joined NAPO. That's the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. They have amazing training, and I dug in immediately and um, got two specialist certificates within a few months um, and have been plugging along ever since. Um, recently, a year ago, I uh, became a certified professional organizer, and that requires about 1,500 hours of um, logged paid work and education. Wow. So, so it's ongoing training. And always. Very I'm good. always in class. So what are, so what are the, some of the most common requests you have? How does someone go about saying, gee, I need to have my home organized, or my business? What, what do they do usually? What's typical? Um, the majority are women. Um, I am getting more calls from um, men and, and some women with businesses helping them. Um, and that's why I started Zen Your Biz as well. Um, but a lot of women will call me because they're just, they've hit a block, they're overwhelmed. And that's the term I hear most often. So my motto is I offer non-judgmental help to busy and overwhelmed people. Um, and that's where they are. They're usually overwhelmed. It could be, um, stuff just piling up. It could be paper. It could be things they inherited, um, or things that they have just never let go of for whatever reason. So the things that... For instance, you have a, I know for me when I was moving, I had a pile of beautiful china that was very expensive, but my kids didn't want any of that stuff. Right. So, and then I had lots and lots of photographs, the old fashioned time where you actually had them printed out. What kind of advice do you give for people who have all those types of things that your kids don't want? Well, um, I'm glad you asked because if you go to any thrift store, you will find lots of china. Um, china is just, everybody has it, or at least did have it. Um, years ago and it's just not a big thing anymore for weddings so what i recommend to people is that maybe you keep a couple sets just uh settings just to just for the memories and because that may be all you need anyway True. and then donate the rest um if it is expensive you could try selling it um piece by piece on ebay or um uh, replacements.com i think it is so um and what was the other part and what the, about if you know it's like oh photos yes the photos, photos. okay um, I've actually been helping a client with photos and you'd think that it'd be hard for anybody to help with that but I actually take a big stack and I sort through and pull out put aside all the photos that are just not good shots that don't have people in them uh, that are worn uh, worn out and um, and I put those aside and I would push those across the table to her and she'd look through and look at the good set and it was pretty much straight on with that so I recommend even if you think you're not gonna get rid of any photos, that you give it a shot, uh, sit down and, um, and call through them. You're probably gonna get rid of, I don't know, um, a, a third to half, a half. And I just say, if you have extras and duplicates, um, 
the holidays are a great time to let go of those. Bring them to a family member you're visiting. Gift. <laughs> yes, and spread them out on the table and see who takes what, and the rest you can, you know. Well, you know, go. something else that I, I learned to, um, from a photographer, she told me to take the old photographs out and put them in a pile at the holidays, yeah, which is better, and bring the grandchildren out because yeah. they're not used to that. And they will, have, they, my grandchildren have so much fun going through them and picking out who their mommy is. Okay. And, they love doing yeah. that. Then if the Family parents does. don't want it, it gets exactly. tossed. Exactly. Perfect. So it doesn't go You've back in the door. You've done this before. I, well, I moved. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that. So what, do you, um, what kind of tips can you give for these busy moms? Um, maybe they work or maybe they're stay-at-home moms, but they have the toy room or the den, and it's just constantly a mess. What, what kinds of tips can you give them? Um, get rid of some things. And one thing I learned from being a mom myself, um, my daughter's now 26, but I have learned that you can give your kids way too much stuff. Um, and so it's a good time to go through and just uh, sort. But I do recommend involving the kids. I've worked with kids as young as five, a five-year-old girl, and she had about a hundred stuffed animals. Oh. So I had a bag, I had two bags. I had a bin that says keep and another which was give. And I explained anything she gave away would go to a child who didn't have anything. Um, and so the first few times I'd hold something up, it was keep, 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 but then there's that first give and then she filled the bag. So, oh, yeah, her so mother was really proud of her. Yes. And I think parents are surprised. I don't think they expect that their kids will do that. But I think there's some trust issues if you just go in and, and do it on your own without um, without them being involved. They can learn a lot from organizing. Very good. Yeah. So what about closets? What do you see in the closets that's, oh my gosh, you gotta organize your closet? Um, you know, a lot of people ask me if I follow Marie Kondo, and one thing I do follow is categories. I think it's a really good idea to go through one type of thing in the home at a time. Can you explain that? Because I don't follow her sure. at all, but I've heard of yeah. her. So. Well, what I've seen on the show is that she has them take it. every piece of clothing and pile it in a pile. Now, I've had clients ask me if I'm gonna do that and then leave, and the answer is no, I'm not gonna do that. We'll work. Um, on what we can get done um, within the time frame and not leave chaos behind. So we may not do it all at once, but we are going to. Oops, we are going to get through um, category of clothes. We're going to go so through. So how do you thing. put categories together? Like, what's what kind of categories? Um, well, first process is just sorting. And once you sort, you might then you might find. Well, do I really need eight coats in Florida? Probably don't. Yeah. And a lot of times, until we sort, people don't know how much of a, a thing they really have. Do I mean, you do yeah. you find that people save clothes that they no longer fit in? Yes, yes. And I say maybe keep within one or two sizes. Um, but what I found personally when I was going through clothes and saving all my skinny clothes, when I finally fit into those clothes, I found that they were just old clothes. Yeah. So I ended up getting rid of them anyway. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I found that out too the hard way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they were even rejected at the uh, thrift shops. <laughs> yeah, that tells you something. Most of the time, when I gave away clothes, they were rejected because yeah. I just had them way too long. Yes, yes. Just go mm -hmm. buy some music. Yes. Now, what about for the office? What do you do to organize an office? Um, usually, it's about paper. I've been sorting a lot of paper and setting up filing systems, especially for home offices. But usually it is a system with um, sorting papers. So often what I'll do is I can actually do a sorting process on my own. Some people say, are you going to do this with me or not? Um, I always like to work with the client whenever possible because then they're learning something along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and so usually when it's paper, I'll pre-open mail, go through junk, separate things again like I did with the photos and pass them a cold stack of things to go through. And they'll usually get rid of what I've pulled out anyway. Um, once we've done that, then we see what's left to organize. So um, I always tell people, don't buy anything before, I, before our first session. Let's see what we need, because we may not need a lot more bins or holders or organizing mm -hmm. tools. Rarely do my clients have to buy anything. So, gotcha. Mostly yeah. it's probably throwing things out. Yeah, and we use what they have. So, so. I also heard that you do some sort of, and I don't know what it is, um, digital organizing? Yes. Tell yes. us what that is. So um, digital organizing, I have a technology background. So I've trained, um, I used to teach classes in Microsoft um, and I'm familiar with both Apple and um, PC products. So um, a lot of times it's 
having to do with sorting things into folders, just like if you were going to sort into a regular physical folder, it's really important to get the naming conventions right. Yes. That's half yes. the problem is because then I can never find what I'm looking for. It's like, how did I file this? Right. Just remembering how you filed it. So right. that's organizing right. that. Mm -hmm. And, and it, I've had a client now with paper. I've had a client who said, oh, so how do I file all these happy memory things? And we ended up making a folder called happy memories because that's how she knows to go and look for it. So, family. yes, so you could do the same thing digitally as well. But if you're doing things like filing bank statements, I always say start with maybe the name like Chase and then the year and then uh, mm -hmm. the month and the day. And then they always sort in line. That's great. So, That's, yeah. Wow, I, you just got to, you have to hire somebody to think like that because yeah. we just don't so, think like that. Analytic so, process. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm more the right brain creative, not right. the left brain. Somebody else organizes it then I can follow it. Yes. So who's your ideal customer? How can they reach you? Sure. I really kind of have three ideal customers. Um, I, I guess I call them clients more than anything. So um, one of them, um, it's a group of millennial women. Sometimes I have women call me who really need to have some, they need some help getting organized. They don't have as much, they don't have 30 years of stuff stored, but they're having some organizing problems and they don't want their mothers to come and help them, so they call me. <laughs> so I've had that happen a few times. Uh, my kids families, don't have to worry, I'm not coming to help you. <laughs> some of their families do not know that I helped, but they learn new skills and habits and they are maintaining, which is great to see. Yeah. Um, there's also the, uh, the moms, sometimes anywhere from 35 to 50, who are dealing with um, kids and now they're in the sandwich generation. They have their own children and they have their parents. Um, and sometimes, in some cases, they've already lost a parent and things are filtering down. So now they have their own stuff, their kids, their jobs, and things they've inherited. Um, and it can get really overwhelming. And that, that Gen X group. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and then there, um, there are some women maybe in the their um, 60s and uh, 70s who they've lost parents and they've inherited estates from both and they really just think well that was my mother's i can't let go of wow. that piano i said do you play piano well no <laughs> so but that takes up a lot of space but it, it's very hard there's an it, it is i had that connection. i had the piano and right? it was like nobody i could right. play yankee doodle and right. that was it <laughs> yes. so i i understand that and that's kind of where the coaching comes in because i've had to help coach clients through, through that. Um, letting go of things yeah. um, and just that process overall, overall. And that's the overwhelming part, not knowing where to start, not knowing how to even think about letting go of something and just reframing it that you're not letting go of your grandmother. You're letting go of something that she loved and cherished. Yeah. And, you know, she probably would love to see somebody else using it too. So, yeah. yeah. I gave a lot of good china at an estate sale that I did before I moved and I was looking at china going for 50 cents, but I knew that the people who wanted it needed it. It right. wasn't that they even were like, it, it was, they needed some dishes. Right. So right. I knew it went to a good home. Yeah. Well, th if you know someone or yourself who needs to organize your home or your office, Barbara Trapp is the one to call and Barbara, tell them how they can reach you. You can visit my website, zenyourden.com, or go to my Facebook page, Organizing with Barbara Trapp, and you can reach out to me there. Also, 904-500-SORT. Uh, that's 904-500-7678. So. And we will post that on the site. So, <laughs> okay. thank you. Until next time, this is Zelda with Real Estate Talk. Thank you.